Hey everybody, welcome to my channel, welcome to Week in Nintendo. Every Saturday I like to go back through the past week's biggest headlines so you can get yourself all caught up on all things Nintendo. If you're new here and you like these weekly news rundowns, make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date on everything happening with the channel. And with all that out of the way, Let's go through this week's Nintendo news. On Monday, Nintendo Switch firmware 10.0.0 was released, which allows you to choose from six new Animal Crossing user icons, bookmark your favorite news items, transfer software between the system memory and the SD card, and the big one here, the ability to remap individual Joy-Con and Pro Controller button inputs and save up to five unique profiles to each one. So while we still don't have folders or custom themes on the Switch, this was a nice surprise since the last few system updates have been nothing more than the classic stability improvements. And while this is a great feature for gamers who want to do things like swap the position of the A and B buttons if they own multiple consoles, what this should really be seen as is a massive step in improving the Switch's accessibility for disabled gamers. On Monday, we also got the the sad news that Team Fortress 2, Age of Empires 2, and Star Fox 64 voice actor Rick May had passed away due to this stupid virus. And I'm dating myself a bit here, but I owned Star Fox 64 when it first came out, and that game was a big deal to me. The included rumble pack was such a cool feature, and I also loved the voice acting for all your teammates, another thing that was a much bigger deal back then. And who could forget May's iconic line as Peppy Hair, do a barrel roll, uh, which will go down in infamy in the meme hall of fame. On Tuesday, we learned from a Bloomberg business article that Nintendo developers can reportedly take as much time as they need to be satisfied with a game's quality when speaking to an unnamed company programmer about the recent success of Animal Crossing New Horizons. Nintendo's share price took a hit after announcing the delay of Animal Crossing New Horizons at E3 2019 to quote, ensure the game is the best it can be. So with all the recent exposés around crunch culture in the video game industry, it is nice to see Nintendo prioritizing quality over deadlines, and with the recent jump in their share price due to the popularity of Animal Crossing New Horizons, I'd say this all worked out pretty well for them. Tuesday, we also learned from data miners that there appears to be reference to a yet-to-be-announced Nintendo Switch model going by NXABCD in the recent 10.0.0 update with reports of a secondary display of sorts being hinted at as well. Now, of course, this spawned a flurry of new Switch Pro rumors, or perhaps some new updated Switch with a second screen and clamshell-like design, but I have a hard time believing that's what we're looking at here. I really doubt Nintendo would alter the design of the Switch that much at this point, but we did see the Switch Lite release, which literally doesn't switch, so... Who knows? But if this actually is reference to the inevitable Switch Pro, I still think it'll be quite some time until we see it released, especially with everything that's happening right now. And one thing I didn't see mentioned as far as this rumored secondary display goes, I think it would actually be really cool if some sort of display was integrated into an updated Switch dock, maybe something that could show you a friend request or a game invite or some sale on the eShop while your Switch is sleeping in the dock. But with so little to go on here, this is all purely speculation. Thursday, we got a pretty decent string of announcements for upcoming Switch games, and we'll just go through those real quick. The latest in the Picross puzzle game series, Picross S4, will be coming to the Switch on April 23rd. Star Wars Episode I Racer, a remaster of the classic Nintendo 64 pod racing game, will be releasing on May 12th. And I'm really happy to see Nintendo 64 titles becoming more common on the Switch. I'm still loving that Doom 64 remaster and hope this trend continues. SpongeBob SquarePants, The Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, a remake of the 2003 game that came to Xbox, PS2, and GameCube, will be coming to the Switch on June 23rd. And I never played this one, but I have had my eye on it since there seems to be a lot of nostalgic excitement around this release from gamers a bit younger than myself, and the level of effort that appears to be going into this remake certainly looks promising. We also learned that Crisis Remastered will be coming to all platforms, including the Switch, this summer, potentially August 7th, 2020, 
the date that the Crisis story kicks off with. The remaster is being co-developed by Saber Interactive, who worked on the Switch port of The Witcher 3, so I'll be really curious to see how the Switch version runs. Crisis is a notoriously demanding game, one that's become somewhat of a meme for benchmarking a PC's or a console's power, but I'd say the port is in very capable hands with Saber Interactive and their incredible work of bringing The Witcher 3 over to Switch. Saber Interactive is reportedly also working on a Game of the Year edition of World War Z that will be coming to all consoles, including the Switch, with a yet-to-be-announced release date. And that does it for this week's Nintendo News. Not the most exciting week, but it is nice to see that even with all the delays and uncertainty in the video game industry, there's still plenty to look forward to coming out on the Nintendo Switch in the coming months, and I'd be really curious to know out of all those recent Switch announcements, which one are you looking forward to the most? And until next week, have a great weekend, play some video games, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>